the northern Australian coast. A tropical paradise. A beautiful place for a holiday. But every now and then, disaster strikes. In a normal year, around 11 tropical cyclones develop in Australian waters and four make landfall on the coast. But where do those spiralling superstorms come from? Well, they come from out there, the tropical ocean. Because they need warm waters, cyclones usually happen up north, but they can travel down the coast or inland and still have big impacts as ex-tropical cyclones. For a cyclone to form, you need nice warm water, more than 26.5 degrees. You also need humid, rising air to give moisture to the storm. Plus, you need to be at least 500 kilometres away from the equator for the Coriolis effect to kick in. The Coriolis effect is where the air gets curved as it moves across the globe because the Earth rotates faster around the equator than at the poles. A cyclone also needs what's called low vertical shear. So vertical shear is when a layer of air is going at a different speed or direction to the layer of air above it. But even if all of those criteria are met, there's no guarantee a cyclone will form. It's always a bit tricky to tell which little disturbance is gonna go rogue and turn into the next big one. But if a cyclone does form, it will feed off all of that heat and moisture and spiral into one of the most powerful natural events on the planet. Using this wind tunnel, we can see just how fast those winds can get in a cyclone. The strength of a cyclone is expressed in categories. In Australia, Category 5 cyclones are the strongest, bringing the most destructive winds. Cyclones can be hundreds of kilometres wide, but the strongest winds are around the eye wall, which surrounds the eerily calm eye at the centre of the storm. And it's not just the winds you need to watch out for. There are other dangers, like storm surge, which is often the deadliest impact. So that's where the cyclone pushes the ocean into the land and can raise sea levels by up to six metres. And then there's the rain, which can bring terrible flooding before, during, or even after the winds have died down. Now the flooding can be especially bad if the storm's going very slowly or if it stalls over one area. So this summer, keep up with the warnings and make sure you have a plan in place for how you are going to respond to an emergency, wherever you are. And in the meantime, I might go for a swim.